Today I've got a nice number theory problem that came from an Austrian math Olympiad in 2023. So this year, if you're watching this now, and I think this is a popular enough problem that it also showed up in a Moroccan math contest in I think 2012. Okay, so let's see what we have. Our goal is to find all positive integers n and k satisfying the equation n factorial plus n equals n to the k. So we've got this kind of exponential action on the right hand side and this factorial action on the left hand side. That's what I think makes this interesting. And along the way in our solution, we're going to use this like pretty simple extension of something called Wilson's theorem. And that says that m minus 1 factorial is congruent to minus 1 mod m if m is prime. That's the standard statement of Wilson's theorem. It's congruent to 2 mod m if m is equal to 4. And it's congruent to 0 mod m otherwise. So in other words, if m is composite but not equal to 4. So let's maybe get started with our solution here. So let's just start with this uh, equation, n factorial plus n equals n to the k. And let's observe that we can factor an n out of the left-hand side of the equation. That's because here we're taking n to be bigger than or equal to 1. So factoring an n out will give us n minus 1 factorial plus 1 equals n to the k. And then from there, we can divide both sides by n, leaving us with n minus 1 factorial plus 1 is equal to, let's see, n to the k minus 1. So where can we go from there? Well, I think I'd probably like to move this 1 to the right-hand side of the equation, and that leaves us with n minus 1 factorial is equal to minus 1 plus n to the k minus 1. And now let's reduce this mod n. Well, of course, assuming that k is bigger than or equal to 2 in this case. Maybe let's look at the case when k is equal to 1 over here and see if we get any solution. That way we can just go ahead and assume that k is bigger than or equal to 2. Okay, so let's see. If we have k is equal to 1, we have n factorial plus n is equal to n, which that means that n factorial is equal to 0, but that gives us no solution. So that means that we can indeed assume that k is bigger than or equal to 2. In other words, like strictly bigger than 1. But that means that this is definitely a multiple of n right here. Okay, so anyway, reducing mod n gives us n minus 1 factorial is congruent to negative 1 modulo n. But notice that tells us that n is prime. Or I guess it could also be equal to 1. I guess we should say that here. Or n is equal to 1. That's just not super interesting over here. Okay, so let's write that down. So n equals 1 or n is prime. But now let's notice that that breaks us down into a couple of cases. So that means that n minus 1 is equal to 1 or n minus 1 is equal to 2 or n minus 1 is composite. And why is that? Well, the only consecutive primes are 2 and 3. And this n minus 1 is equal to 2 is coupled with the n is equal to 3. Otherwise, n minus 1 must be composite because any prime is preceded by either a composite or the number 1. And that's what we're getting in these outer cases. Okay, well, let's look at these two cases that we can work with like individually and see what that leads us to. So if n minus 1 is equal to 1, that means that n is equal to 2. So we'll look at that case. And if n minus 1 is equal to 2, that means that n is equal to 3. We'll look at that case. Okay, so let's see what we get for those two cases before we move on to the more general setup that's assumed by this, which is that n minus 1 is composite. Okay, so if n is equal to 2, plugging that into our equation right here, that means we have 2 to the k is equal to 2 factorial plus 2, which is equal to 4. But that's pretty easy to solve, and we see that we get k is equal to 2. 
So there we've got a solution, n is equal to two, k is equal to two. Now let's look at the n is equal to three case. So that'll give us three to the k is equal to three factorial plus three. Let's see, three factorial is six plus three is nine. So that means that k is equal to two. And that gives us another solution. n is equal to three, k is equal to two. So those are our two solutions so far. And now we need to look at the case when n minus one is composite a little bit more carefully. So in the previous board, we got these two solutions. We had k is equal to two in both solutions, but n could be two or three. Now what we need to look at next is the case when n minus one is composite. That was all that was left after what we saw before. And we can assume that n minus one is bigger than or equal to four, which means n is bigger than or equal to five. Also, let's recall that the bigger equation governing this whole thing was n minus one factorial is equal to n to the k minus one. So I'd like to start by rewriting that equation and see if we can factor it all. So we've got n minus one factorial is equal to n to the k minus one minus one. But as long as k is bigger than one, which I think on the last board we checked that k had to be bigger than one, we can factor this. So this factors nicely as n minus one times n to the k minus two added all the way down to n plus one. So that's a standard factorization of a difference of k minus one powers in this case, keeping in mind that one is the same thing as one to the k minus one. But now we can divide both sides by n minus one. That'll leave us with n minus two factorial on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, we'll have n to the k minus two added all the way down to n plus one. But this fact that we've got an n minus two factorial right here motivates us to use Wilson's theorem again, now when m is equal to n minus one, which we know that n minus one is composite, which means we'll use one of these two cases down here. Okay, so let's rewrite that. So I've got n to the k minus two added all the way down to n plus one, will be equal to n minus two factorial, but now that's gonna be congruent to, let's see, two mod n minus one, if n minus one is equal to four, that's this case right here, or zero modulo n minus one otherwise. Okay, great. But notice if n minus one is equal to four, that pretty clearly tells us that n is equal to five. So we should probably do that case on its own before we move on to this last case. Okay, so if we have n is equal to five, maybe into our original equation, that tells us that five to the k is equal to five factorial plus five, which is 125, which is five cubed. So that tells us that k is equal to three. That gives us one more solution. Notice we have n is equal to five, k is equal to three. Okay, so that's great. We've got three solutions so far. And now we can look at the case when n is strictly bigger than five and n minus one is composite. Now let's finish this thing off. We've got our three solutions. We know that n minus one is composite, which means it has to be bigger than or equal to six based on the cases that are left. And we showed that in all of these cases, we have this sum must be congruent to zero mod n minus one. But now let's notice this following very simple calculation, and that is that n is congruent to one modulo n minus one. Clearly, it's one more than n minus one. Okay, so what does that tell us? Well, that tells us we can replace all of these n's with simply the number one. But that means how many ones are we adding together? We're adding exactly k minus one ones together. So that'll leave us with what? Well, this is k minus one. So we have k minus one is congruent to zero mod n minus one. Okay, but what does that mean? That means that k is congruent to one 
modulo n minus one. Furthermore, that means that k is equal to a times n minus one plus one, where a is, let's see, a positive integer, or really a non-negative integer, just based off of everything. But notice k cannot be equal to one based off a calculation that we did before. So that means that a is bigger than or equal to one. It cannot be equal to zero. But that gives us this nice inequality. That tells us that k is in fact bigger than or equal to n. And that's actually what's gonna take us all the way home. And that's via a pretty simple calculation. So let's look at this, n to the n minus two. So that's gonna be bigger than n minus two to the n minus two, clearly because we made the base smaller, but that's gonna be bigger than n minus two factorial. So that's a pretty easy calculation or inequality to show is true for the values of n that we're working in. But we know that n minus two factorial, well, that can be expanded out as that power sum like we saw before. So that's equal to n to the k minus two added all the way down to n plus one. But now that itself is bigger than n to the k minus two just by dropping a bunch of the last terms. But since k is bigger than or equal to n, that's bigger than or equal to n to the n minus two. But now let's cut out the middle here and we have n to the n minus two is strictly bigger than n to the n minus two and that's our contradiction. So that means in the remaining cases, there are no solutions, meaning that these are our three only solutions. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you wanna get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.